Forge Labs messaged me and six other YouTubers to challenge us to try to survive the next seven real life days inside this World of Warcraft inspired mod pack. We will have to level up our skills to even use stone tools, all while facing some of the craziest creatures I have ever seen. I had to face everything from barbarians to dragons, while also trying not to get killed by the other players. Will I be able to survive the next seven days, or will I die trying? After Sean's lovely countdown, all of us immediately started scrambling for any materials we could get our hands on. In the first barrel that I searched, I found a golden apple and a new pair of iron Yeezys that I couldn't even use. So I continued searching and found a mask with some sort of worm egg, which sounded kind of terrifying. So of course I grabbed it without any second thoughts. But with all the time that it took me to get these few items, almost everything from the inn had already been looted by the other players. So I decided to leave the inn and explore the rest of this world. However, to do that exploring, I needed food. So me and Robert tore apart this wheat field so we could make ourselves some bread. After that, I started doing basic Minecraft tasks, such as brutalizing trees with my hands, making wooden tools, mining for my first pieces of stone, and lucky for me, right next to the mustard inn was a massive cave. This cave included coal, which gave me tons of experience to start upgrading my skills such as defense, which would allow me to wear my iron boots. But while I was doing that, I overheard Sean and some other guys discussing a bounty. I want to turn my bounty in. And that intrigued me. So I started listening in. However, they didn't really disclose anything too radical about these bounties, and even if I had one against me. So I decided to head deeper into the cave to get more coal so I could level up and be protected against anyone who may try and claim me as a bounty. On top of the skill-based leveling system, we also had a job mod, which would allow us to get custom items that only that job can have. However, because I'm prone to dying, I chose the smith, which would allow me to make super strong armor. With that sentiment in mind, I headed deeper into the cave to mine anything and everything I saw. I quickly took a break and then started smelting all of the materials that I had found so far and started waiting for them to finish smelting. Using the experience that I gained from all of those materials, I continued to upgrade my skills so I could actually use iron armor and tools. For the next hour after that, I started exploring the caves and mined everything in sight, including copper, coal, silver, I, I don't care, anything that I found, I mined. But I also ran into some really weird creatures, like these things called mimics, who just so happened to drop a leprechaun hat. And I killed two of them, meaning I now had two leprechaun hats. And, um... Well, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these, but I've got them now. However, there was a lot more than just mimics down here. There was also these glowy skeletons and even vampires. And these vampires started to become a problem, so I started killing them. However, it took forever because I was doing it one at a time, getting them to an angle where I would just be slapping their knees. But that's when I heard some steps behind me, and next thing I know, a vampire sank its teeth into me. I was infected with something called Sanguire Vampiris. All I knew was that that was bad. So I went onto WebMD, as any rational person does, to see what would happen if I wasn't cured. It said that symptoms may include, but not be limited to, nausea, dry throat, specifically for blood, and more sensitive skin and eyes when it comes to the sun. Now, that shouldn't be a problem because I'm a gamer and haven't seen the sunlight in ages, but I didn't want to become a vampire because that would make me too weak to survive any of the other terrifying creatures that are in this mod pack. So what do I have to do to cure myself? Well, I needed to find milk. So I spent the remaining 10 minutes of my countdown before I could potentially turn into a vampire looking for a cow. I climbed over mountains and walked through valleys, but after 10 minutes, I didn't find one. And eventually the timer only had a few seconds left. I honestly had no clue what was gonna happen and expected to just peel over dead. However, when the effect went away, I gained two hearts, my hunger bar was now switched to blood levels, and there was a random one right above my enchantment levels. While I didn't know what most of that meant, especially the random purple one in the middle of my screen, I did know that I needed blood and so I had to find animals. So I quickly located a few cows and drank their blood. Now that my blood was higher, I had some time to look around for some more animals before it got lower again. But because I didn't have full health, it immediately took a lot of my blood away to heal me. So now I had barely any blood and only half health. I found some other small animals, but it was not nearly enough for me to feel secure in the amount of blood that I had. That's not it either. Because of my incredibly pasty gamer skin, 
I couldn't get under any direct sunlight, and if I did, this annoying yellow bar would show up around my screen. And I had no clue what it would do to me if it fully encapsulated my screen, but I didn't really want to try and find out. But just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, I ran into vampire hunters. Great! After dealing with them, with some difficulty, I still had to get blood. Luckily for me, the sun was about to go down, so at least I wouldn't have to worry about sunburns anymore. Even though I had freedom of movement, I was still being chased by goblins and barbarians. My only goal was to get blood from the cows before these creatures removed me from my own body. In my attempts, I ended up getting brought down to two hearts, which is, like the kids say, no bueno. However, even the bushes wanted to harm me, and I soon found myself at one and a half hearts. But I spotted a tower, which I had no clue if it was safe or not, but decided to head in that direction anyway. Once I got close to the tower, I found a group of cows and drank so much of their blood that it turned directly into beef. Do not pass go. Do not collect any more blood. All of the creatures around this tower allowed me to get my blood bar up to full, and same thing with my health. So, I was now confident to break into the tower where there was a bunch of mobs. I immediately started attacking them, destroying their spawners as I went, before noticing that zombies and skeletons were passive unless I attacked them. Now for once, something was going my way. With this newfound knowledge, I broke down an iron door, finding myself some very juicy resources, including a diamond hoe. With my newfound loot, I started heading up the tower to try and loot every single floor. On the first floor I cleared, I found spiders and zombies. The spiders tried to wrap me up in a web and turn me into a casserole, all while the zombies didn't even care. This lone spider was able to get me down to four hearts and I noped out of there in search for more blood. After finding more, and eventually healing up, I headed back in and was promptly scared away by more spiders. I left and tried to get to a safe location, but once I had taken out one of the spiders, I peeked my head around a corner and immediately saw a creature that didn't look very friendly. It shot me with a poisonous arrow, so I ran. But once I realized I was cornered, I had to fight. After a long and honestly terrifying fight, I was left with half a heart and very little blood, and the blood I had was going away rapidly. So my next task would be getting a stable source of blood so I could survive. I started running all over the place, trying to find something, anything that would get my health and my blood up, but I didn't find anything. And soon enough, it got dark, and I was really getting worried about all of the mobs that were spawning all over this forest. I was super stressed, and in fact, I even started talking to myself just about the danger I was in. Much to my annoyance, a wolf had nibbled my ankles and taken me down. Now, I had 60 seconds before I would die, and if I did die, I would have to reset all of my skill levels and start at wooden tools again. But this time, as a vampire, so I just wouldn't have any food. I'd have to just go for food and not level anything up. So, I sat there and waited as the countdown ticked down. But for some reason, instead of showing up with the menu I was expecting, it gave me the option to revive myself. Now apparently, being a vampire, this was one of my skills. But it would leave me on half a heart, once again, with no blood. And if I died again, before getting more blood, I would be done for good, and actually have to reset myself. Now I had to move extremely cautiously to ensure that that wouldn't happen. But my first goal was finding blood, and finding it right now. I then stumbled onto my saving grace, a village. Now, this place was honestly a godsend. I immediately went to town on a mandatory public blood donation service, where every villager had to give me some of their blood. With only two villagers, I was actually fully able to regenerate my health. Now that I knew I would be able to survive, I quickly claimed a house as my own and emptied my inventory into the chest. As darkness faded in, I explored more of the village, finding that it was quite a big village. However, there was one problem. The iron golem didn't really like me. So, I sent it on a nice vacation. But also in this village, there was a waystone, which allowed me to teleport to any other waystone that I found anywhere in the world. I immediately took the opportunity to go back to the mine and retrieve the materials that I had left in the mine when I had fled once I got infected. Once I got those materials, I headed back to the village and made myself a hole in the wall right next to the waystone that would be known as home for now. I had honestly been recording for quite a few hours at this point and was kind of getting tired and didn't want to make any stupid mistakes because I was tired, and so I decided to log off for a few hours. When I logged back in later in the day, I discovered that I lived right next to a Goblin King castle. Now, this boss bar was actually really annoying me, 
and I thought I was the only king living in this area, so I couldn't have any competitors. So I started attacking the goblins from the outside. But these suckers were kind of tough, and the ones with bows were just knocking my health down from out of my range, and then running away the second that I saw them. But there were also these two larger goblins, and these suckers had a ton of health. I started trying to take them out, but the tables quickly turned when they started taking me out instead. I was downed multiple times and then just got kind of straight up tired of dying and decided to switch it up and meet with Lagundo and Shadow Mech. Boy, <laughs> what Boy. is on your head? <laughs> Uh, I'm lucky. After infecting Shadow Mech, I left, and, uh, <laughs> apparently he decided to change his life plans and not become a vampire like me and Sneeve. But also, after this meeting, I felt a lot more comfortable with all of these players, and even showed Lagundo around my village. After some time, I showed him a mine that I let him use before I logged off for the rest of the night. When day two rolled around, I immediately started mining for some more diamonds. But as I traveled deeper into the cave, I found a brewing stand and even some more tools. But while I was down there, I also started to hear noises, and it was not, in fact, a fun sounding noise. It straight up sounded out of a horror game, and this is Minecraft, and it's not supposed to be a horror game. The next thing I knew, I had this massive, terrifying cave monster chasing me. It took my health down so fast, but I had just enough time to set my spawn at a bed that I found down there, just in case I wouldn't be able to revive myself. But I also found out the name of this thing, and it was called a Corpse Stalker, and it turns out I'm a corpse right now, and it is stalking me. As I was laying there on the ground, I had to find some way to try and do something to get this thing away from me. So I looked in my inventory, trying to find something, anything I could use to come back and fight this guy. I was able to equip a shield in my offhand and watched as the countdown ticked down. Three, two, one. I immediately smashed the revive button and had half health and no blood. Knowing that the thing was down here and it just kind of disappeared, I decided to go back home. But on my way up, I grabbed some more materials because I get distracted easily. Then following my path back to my cave entrance, I quickly ran up the stairs that I had made early on day one, ran into the mustard inn, and took my waystone back home. Once I had made it back home, I immediately started filling up blood so I could regenerate my health. Once I finished doing that, I headed to a goblin castle and started to see if there was anything left in there that I had missed on day one. I found an enchanting book in one of the towers off to the side, and then I spotted more goblins, and so I started using my bow to take them out. I took a bunch of these suckers out, and I eventually found another chest with more enchanted books and other goodies. I then started looking around the throne to see if there was anything left and discovered that there was a room full of goodies. There were blocks of gold and emerald, and for those of you asking yourselves, what about the chests? Well, in those, there was iron, beetroots, and some other nonsense. After putting everything back in these beautifully sorted chests, I switched jobs and became a hunter. Now, hunters apparently get experience by killing animals, but if I got a high enough level with that, I could make myself a very deadly sword. So I had to come up with a strategy so I could level up very quickly in this job. And so if I just killed animals, I would, you know, get some levels. So I thought, I've got a pond right outside, and there's a lot of animals floating around in that thing, also known as fish. And so I decided to go for a little swim and start taking them out. It apparently gave me the same experience points as if I were killing a more dangerous creature. So I spent a good few minutes killing fish that I couldn't even eat. But with all the experience I got, I made it up to level 5 very quickly. And with that achieved, I was able to make the Iron Hunter Sword which was more powerful than a normal diamond sword. It took a bunch of materials, but luckily for me, I had them already, and quickly assembled the sword. With it in hand, I warped back to the Mustard Inn, and went back down into the cave, ready to deal with the Corpse Stalker. I did a lot of mining and gathering, and got a bunch of iron and any other materials I could find. And after getting all those materials, I headed back home to store the stuff in my chest. With all of these new materials, I was now able to assemble an altar that I could use to upgrade my vampire skills. Only one problem. I had no clue how to use it, how it worked, or anything else. So I decided to meet up with some other players to find out any information I could. So heading back to the Mustard Inn, I met up with Kipley first. How have you been doing? Oh, you know, I've, I've been good. I, as you can see, I look quite strange. Yeah, so um, do I. My face is not normal. Oh. Are those red eyes? Is that what that is? Yeah, yeah. You know, my face got a little messed up in the you know, whole the vampire thing. Kind of thing. Yeah. After briefly talking to Kipley, we decided that we would group up to go to the Nether. But 
as we had mentioned earlier, to even use a diamond pickaxe to get obsidian, I needed level 15 in my mining skill. So I headed back in the mines to get the necessary levels to get there. It took a while of mining and eventually I was able to smelt down enough materials to upgrade myself to a level 15 miner. Now, I was able to mine using diamond tools, so with that skill now unlocked, I immediately started turning lava into obsidian. While in the mine, I noticed a weird brick in the floor and, you know, heard some spiders and so I decided to break it down and uh, yeah, the spiders, they, uh, they did not look friendly. They looked very, uh, very angry. So I uh, started shooting it and killed it and it's, I don't know, babies or whatnot. Uh. I don't know what those things were. But when I got inside, it was apparently called a spider dungeon, which kind of seemed fitting because all I could find was spiders. I went around looting it and found a bunch of iron, some gold coins, some actual gold, and then I decided to start clearing out the spiders from a back room, eventually making it to a chest in the back. That chest contained four diamonds, which was a pretty big win. Now after clearing out those useful materials from the chest, I wanted some of the flooring material, which kind of looked cool. So, while I was gathering as much as I possibly could, Mr. Sneeve sent a chat message saying my name. With that, I asked him about the altar because he was also a vampire. And he just so happened to mention that he had used it and leveled up to a level four vampire. Now in this scenario, we decided that that was the highest level vampires could go, mostly because we wanna do a vampire versus hunter scenario in the future. So if you wanna see that, just like let me know in the comments and you know, we'll get the ball rolling on that. But knowing that Sneeve had the knowledge of how to upgrade the vampire level, I decided to meet up with him. What up? <laughs> <laughs> and Kipley apparently for some reason wanted to join us, even though she didn't want to be a vampire or have her blood sucked or I don't know. I guess she just kind of wanted to hang out with the cool kids. After using the cow's blood to level up, we were ready to go on an adventure. But this adventure was not just to the nether. It was also to a desert, which apparently contains something that Lagunda wanted. But with how far away the nearest desert was, we decided to travel through the nether and oh, shenanigans ensued. <laughs> oh my god. Is this the thing, dude? Oh! I'm crawling, I'm crawling back to the waist zone! Oh my gosh. Now, what you just saw there was a giant worm that almost killed all of us once we had gotten out of the nether, but one of us survived and was able to revive the group. Once we were all back up, and when night had come, I flew around as a bat so that I couldn't get pulled under the sand by another worm. Now, Sneev and I became the eyes in the sky for a little team exploration because we could be bats. And Lagundo was looking for some artifact and he said it was in some kind of dilapidated building. So I had to go back and find the others once I couldn't find it. With Sneev being a bat and Kipley and Lagundo hiding in a boat in the middle of the ocean somewhere, I started looking around the ocean to find them. And eventually I, I did. So they uh, quickly described what type of building I should be looking for, and I found something that kind of resembled it. So I flew towards it, and I found some mobs inside that kind of sounded like pillagers, and was immediately shot out of the sky. Because I was a bat, I had no armor, so that it didn't protect me at all. I was just flying there and just immediately got shot out of the sky, which was not fun. But also, because I was flying when I was downed, I was, you know, kind of half dead flying around and flying incredibly slowly. So I slowly floated down to the ground to get rescued by Sneeve. Lagundo was right about one thing. The desert was not a friendly place and the vampires among us were about to be facing some significant issues. It was becoming day per usual and I no longer had an umbrella that I could use to hide from the sun. And believe it or not, that was not good in the slightest. Once revived from that fiasco, things did not improve. Now, unlike what we were planning on doing by getting away as fast as humanly possible, we were now stuck in this desert because the sun was quote unquote too hot. Kipley and Lagundo left the safety of this netherrack shelter I was hiding in and started trying to take out the pillagers that had shot me. It was actually quite funny to watch from a distance, but I'm sure they were terrified. While waiting for night to come, Kipley and Lagundo were actually able to find the thing they were looking for, and I was excited for them from the sidelines. Once night finally rolled around again, I immediately became a bat and started helping Lagundo and Kipley find the safest way to get to the portal while not getting eaten by worms. Part of that process included getting those pillagers away from them, and so I flew up to them and lured them into a nest full of pufferfish and that was quite funny. I then led the team along the coastline, 
back to the portal where we all eventually made it to safety. We met back up at the inn where Lagundo made the book and he had given us all the book so we could get the achievement as well. Now, with that task done, I'm not gonna lie, it was midnight and I was getting tired, but for one of the things that Lagundo had learned from the book, he needed gold. So I decided to help him grab some gold. And so I spent a lot of time in bat mode, flying around in caves and taking diamonds from ahead of where he was but also getting a ton of gold. Now, in the future, I would need an abundance of diamonds if I were to get all the gear and tools that I wanted. But once me and Lagundo had gotten all of the materials we were looking for, we went back to meet with Kifli and get her the achievements that we had gotten from the book without her. With that done, I was also done for the night. And so I logged off for a few hours, only to come back in the morning of day three. On the third day, I had a singular goal to make the best armor possible, and that was obsidian armor. But that would require lots and lots of material. So to the mine I went. I started gathering iron, gold, a diamond, and definitely some obsidian. However, mobs didn't really like that I was doing that, so they tried to stop me from accomplishing that mission. But when I killed another mimic, I was able to get myself a pair of cozy bunny slippers that would make me jump higher. And these things were honestly amazing. I could jump now two blocks high, and I loved the extra agility it gave me. But to my main point, I had to get a lot of obsidian. And while I was doing that, the corpse stalker, or whatever that thing was called, kept coming out and trying to get me. And I barely got away by getting in bat form and I just stayed above it and tried not to die. However, I was being put in a lot of very risky situations by being down in this mine. And if my cat would stop me out, bro, stop. However, the corpse stalker didn't want me getting materials. So, you know, that was, that was very frustrating. But luckily I had brought down some bottles of blood, which would help me regenerate my health, even though I was getting hit down to very low health. But with being a bat now, I was able to fly all around caves looking for materials, so that really, really helped, especially when it came to looking for diamonds. However, when I was in this deep stone, tight little area, a corpse stalker came out of nowhere and smacked me once again. And luckily for me, there was some lava nearby, so I lured this thing into the lava and let it drown, and it apparently died. I didn't know if that would solve the problem for at least a short period of time, or if I'd be completely free of this sucker, but I don't know. That's just how, how it is sometimes. But on top of finding lots of trouble down in these caves, I also found myself this weird looking temple thing. It was, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. There, there was a lot of things in there. There was like traps. Uh, there was water, like a water maze kind of thing. It was pretty weird. But while in one of these underground temples, I, uh, you know, I had to gather all the materials in there. So I uh, started looking around. I found a lot of vases that I immediately broke. Sorry, mom, for doing that with our own vases. But I broke them and was able to get a lot of materials. However, I had a problem that was going to get worse in just a little bit. I was down to very little blood and I had run out of all the blood bottles that I had initially brought down into the mines. So I would have to find some way to recover those. However, with how deep I was in the mine, I didn't really have a way back up to the surface to do that. So I decided to keep flying around looking for more diamonds and I frankly got a ton of them. I had like 39 at one point and then I found more and then I kept finding more and more despite you know not having any blood and not being able to regenerate my health at all. And eventually after some time, I was tagged down to two and a half hearts with no way to regenerate my health. And with me being in the cave, I, uh, you know, started going up closer to the surface so then I could get back and get some blood. Me and Robert were having a little bit of a disagreement. He, um, well, he wanted to sleep, and, uh, if I see the sun, then, um, well, I'd die, and that's not necessarily the best for me. And, uh, so I was just kind of stuck flying around in a cave, not being able to go up to the surface, but also not being able to be within range of any single mob because a single hit from any of them would instantly kill me. But yeah, then, uh, you know, Robert decided to sleep. So uh, now I was just kind of stuck down here, waiting out until the sun went down. So that was, uh, that was great, lots of fun. Um, 
did enjoy. Then eventually it became night again, and Robert was wanting people to sleep. And, um, well, I couldn't sleep and didn't want to sleep, but, uh, then he slept, and I was, uh, once again still stuck in the cave with, once again, no way out of the cave. However, luckily for me, I found another underground kind of thingamabobber. I think it was supposed to be a crypt, but it was kind of more exposed than most of the other crypts that I had seen. It had lots of chests, and uh, some of them had golden apples, which would allow me to regenerate my health. So I started eating as many of those as I possibly could before being able to head back up to the surface. And while I was in this cave the entire time, I had barely any health. And it didn't help when I went into a mine shaft and was tagged down to half of a heart. And so now I had to try and navigate my way back up to the surface with only half of a heart and no way to regenerate it. And uh, it didn't help when I got shot by a glow skeleton and was instantly downed. However, I once again had the option to revive myself and I did. But I was once again at half of a heart and flying around trying to find my way out of this cave. But how would I be able to head up to the surface if um, it was still bright out and uh, it didn't get dark? And, you know, Robert didn't want it to get dark. Well, luckily for me, these crypts had lots of spider webs in them. So I started taking down these spider webs to get some string, turned that string into some wool, and then turned that wool into some carpet, and then used that carpet plus some of the iron that I had mined to make myself a brand new umbrella to get myself out from under the sun. With that, I was able to find a way back home and eventually, using my waypoint, made it back to my house, where I was able to get more blood and regenerate my health. However, now I had most of the conventional materials such as iron and diamonds that I would need, I would now need netherite. And netherite is, um, it's a pain to get. I uh, actually have very rarely gone netherite mining, and it's uh, not something I really wanted to do again. But because the armor called for it, to even get the iron chest plate of the upgraded reinforced iron armor, and that was necessary to make reinforced obsidian armor, so of course I had to go get the netherite. So I decided to go into the nether. And let me tell you, this nether stuff was no joke. It was honestly a pain, it was not fun, not in the slightest, and uh, it was terrifying every single time I went in there. Yeah, I brought a lot of golden apples and those would not last long. After finding a good place to mine, I started doing strip mining basic stuff, where I would, you know, make a pretty nice hallway for me to walk down and then be mining the blocks on either side of that road in an effort to mine as much as I could to hopefully expose some netherite. However, this was not really an effective tactic, I'm not gonna lie. It was, um, it was very time consuming and uh, didn't really get much out of it. So I decided to re-examine my tactic Make sure I was even mining on the correct X and Y or Z or I, I don't know how the coordinates work, but whatever, whatever, you know, level is where I'm standing and making sure I was mining on that perfect level that spawned the most netherite. And then after that, I got myself a bunch of beds and returned to the nether to do some bed mining, which was um, also kind of terrifying because uh, I could just blow myself up by accident and it would be an instant kill no matter what armor I had on. So I, uh, I tried my best to be as careful as I could with that, but uh, it wasn't easy. It, not in the slightest. It wasn't easy at all, actually. But you know, that's sometimes how things are. However, after a lot of mining and a lot of beds exploding and even some TNT at one point, I was able to find my first piece of netherite and this was a huge confidence boost. However, it wasn't gonna be enough because only one of these suckers made one netherite scrap, and I would need four to make a single ingot, and I needed a lot of ingots. And uh, if I wanted to upgrade to the reinforced diamond armor, which was the best armor I think that we could get, uh, that stuff required blocks of netherite. And that, um, yeah, I didn't really want to do that. But, you know, if I was mining and I found enough, then sure, I'd upgrade my armor to that. But um, I had to go back multiple times to get more beds, to regenerate my health, all, all kinds of crazy shenanigans. Um, I'm probably skipping over a bunch here, which uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, editor, for if I miss something, just throw it on, uh, throw it on screen and make it look dramatic or, or funny or... Where'd you go? Oh, what the? How mm -hmm. are you here? Right I don't. Here. I don't know. I, 
I was just minding my own business and then I just got teleported here. Uh, I, I did a lot of mining for the netherite and uh, then got a bunch of netherite. But after, you know, getting a bunch of it and wanting to go back and look for more, um, some guys said that they wanted to meet up and it wasn't just any guys. It was Robert, Shadow, and Sean. And so I was like, uh, sure, let's, uh, let's meet up. That sounds like, um, such a jolly good time. Like, nothing possibly could go wrong with this group of people. So, uh, I met with them, and, uh, yeah, here's kind of what happened. You can just well, I'm gonna, see you if want. I poke Shadow. Ow. Coming in what hot. Was that? that didn't work on me. I it's poke not. you. What happens if I poke you, Ryan? Uh, what happens if I poke you with my teeth? Ah! So seriously, if I, if I hit you with this, do you die? I don't know. Try it. Oh! I no. got I got my toes out. <laughs> no! I do have that Vampire Slayer sword. Are you, are you easy to hit? Where's no. the, where's the bad catcher? Oop, bad catcher. Oh! oh. I have Tell me what happens. On. What? To sum up kind of what happened in that footage right there of uh, this meeting with Sean and eventually Lagundo showed up, but Sean, Robert, and Shadow for the most part, uh, we were just kind of talking about how our experience over the first three days was and, uh, you know, talking about some shenanigans that we had found, some things we had done, and uh, apparently this dungeon that they wanted to go visit. So, uh, you know, I, I kind of wanted in on that, but, you know, we'll, we'll see if I go on that, that mission with them. But then we started testing arrows on each other, because there was just a variety of different arrows. And uh, so we started testing to see if these were dangerous, and, uh, you know, I scared some people with making some crystals come out of the ground. But, you know, as, as a whole, I think that was a pretty good meeting. So then I logged off for a few hours. When I came back, uh, things were, uh, things were interesting. Okay, maybe not too interesting. But, um, I made more beds, and then went back to the nether, and started bed mining once again for some more netherite that went well yielded some good results got a bunch of bunch of netherite from that and then on my way back to the portal got very low on health like like two hearts low and uh had to drop down and get myself a golden apple real quick so i didn't die then continued my journey back to the portal that became a recurring theme while i was in the nether that these you know nether mobs would set me on fire and lower my health down to the point where it'd be very hard to survive when getting back to that portal and then eventually, with all of my spoils of war, aka mining loot, I uh, made it back home and uh, was able to put this towards the best armor project. And then uh, started getting some wood so then I could use it for building an eventual house at some point. And after gathering all those materials over, uh, over a solid few hours, I assure you, it was, it was hours and hours of mining to get all those materials, I uh, eventually decided to log back off, but that was still not the end of day three. I came back a third time on day three to uh, do some more stuff. Apparently I forgot to start recording and uh, started by recording in the nether. Um, not sure how I got there, but I, I'm sure I went through the portal and then made it there. and. Oh yeah, I remember exactly what happened now. Yeah, so I, I forgot to start the recording, eventually made it to the nether, and um, and almost died, but eventually got down there, drank some more blood, etc. You know how it'd be sometimes. And uh, was going for all this netherrack, or for all this netherite. And um, then I found a piece of netherite, and so I look over at my recording software, and uh, it hadn't started, and I was like, oh. Well, um... Darn, I missed that recording. So, um, that made me a little sad, but that was the end of that little expedition down there before I headed back up and back to the portal. Uh, when I did, I made it back home, made some more beds uh, of a different variety of colors, which made me feel very happy. But now, I was just working on getting the last piece of obsidian armor. I already had the helmet, I had the boots, I had the chest plate and I was just working on the leggings before I would feel pretty comfortable with my armor situation as long as I didn't have to go back and get more blocks to make myself a uh, diamond reinforced armor, which was crazy difficult to make. But um, I didn't want to make it quite yet, so I would leave that as a future day's project. 
But with the obsidian, I was feeling pretty darn secure. But first, I had to uh, finish my set of armor. So on my way to do that, I filled up on blood bottles, and then with my different variety of colors of beds and some TNT, I started blowing holes down in the nether, trying to find as much netherite as I could once again. And uh, with no small feat, I was eventually able to get a bunch of it. Once I was able to get the last piece of netherite that I needed, I was finally able to make the reinforced iron leggings. Now these things, they may look like iron leggings, but they did pretty much the same protection as diamond, which is very significant. So after putting in the netherite, the two diamonds, the four blocks of iron, and the rest of the iron that was needed, I finally had them and then was immediately able to upgrade them to obsidian because it didn't require any more netherite after that. But before I could actually get to it, Lagundo was downed and he didn't have the same powers that I did where I would be able to um, revive myself. I asked him where he was and he was right in front of the inn and I was able to come to his rescue and uh, save him. And then we had a nice little conversation. However, this conversation, while it may seem just like niceties for now, would radically alter directions when we started talking about bounties and when Sneev showed up. And so when talking about these bounties, you remember back on day one, I had initially talked about hearing or overhearing some talks about bounties. Apparently in this inn, there was a bounty for all of us. And so in random chests were scattered around books saying, if you kill this player, you will get it this certain amount of diamonds. And um, apparently Lagundo had my book. And, you know, he could just kill me, but I, uh, I didn't really want that to happen. And for some reason, he didn't want that to happen either. So I decided to negotiate for what I could give to get my book back. I eventually was able to convince him that if I gave him some, some nether wart, some uh, soul stand, basic stuff for making potions, he would give me my bounty book. So that was, uh, that was now my goal was to get that so then I could no longer have a bounty and not have to worry about getting killed by these other players. However, I quickly realized that it would be incredibly difficult to get all of the materials that Lagundo wanted. So I decided that maybe I could propose some sort of other trade, which involved me giving him two extra hearts and some diamonds. However, he said- See, I'm gonna say something which might be slightly disappointing. I really just want the diamonds. Now knowing that he like, only wanted diamonds, I proposed me? giving him yeah. the full 30, and in exchange, he would give me my bounty book. Yeah, there we go. So I took the deal, tossing the diamonds to him, and he gave me my bounty book. We then continued to talk for some time, and then I stumbled across this chest, and um, I'll just let you see exactly what happens. Yeah. Beware quest. Um. Hmm. Debating it, aren't you? I am. I'm debating it. I want to know. For the content. Content play. Screw it. Do it. Okay. Read it out loud, though. You have chosen wisely. You now have 24 hours to kill at least three other players on the server. If you <laughs> fail to do this, you must toss yourself into lava, uh, a lava ocean in the nether, with the current gear you are wearing while you are reading this quest. Should oh. you complete your task, you can set any one of your skill levels to 28 or give yourself a dragon chest plate and helmet. Okay, that, that was crazy. So now I had 24 hours to kill like three other players. It was, oh my gosh, insane, insanely stressful. I didn't sleep that night, but now I had to come up with a plan. Who was I gonna kill? Like, there's not that many of us on this server and at this point in day three, all of us were getting pretty strong. And so to kill the three, I would, um, I would have to come up with something. But then while contemplating and talking this over with Lagundo and cueing him into my plan, something interesting happened in chat. And that was that Sneev died, meaning he now already had to completely reset his levels. He had no way of pretty much hurting me because he couldn't wear iron armor anymore because he was back to level zero on everything. So I decided that that was going to be my first target. And so I went in 
wanting to convince him to let me kill him. After some negotiations, I gave him some stuff and helped him get back leveled up after I had, after I would kill him. And uh, then the sacrifice took place. This was now one out of three kills done. I now had to get two more, and I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to do that. But I still had 23 hours left before the time expired, and I would have to throw myself in lava with all of my stuff, losing all my levels and all of my stuff. So, now that I was one third of the way there, I was feeling pretty confident, so I logged off for the night and was able to actually sleep. Day four started much the same as every other day. It started with me getting some blood, doing the usual stuff, and then going to the nether. But this time, I was not going for netherite. I was going to fulfill my promise to Lagundo by going to explore the nether fortress. So that's what I did. It didn't go well. Not in the slightest. I did. Oh my gosh. There was because of the modded mobs that were there. Like, wow, it was dangerous, like really dangerous. And I got downed multiple times and then eventually just said, nah, sorry to inform you, Mr. Lagundo. Yeah, I'll just get you more diamonds or literally anything else because um, that sucks. And I don't want to risk my life going back there. So then I went back to my house, tried to make some TNT. Not sure what purpose I had for it yet. Uh, you know, I was considering possibly a trap or I don't know. But I didn't have any immediate plans for it, so I just threw it in the chest. But after that, I went back down into the mines to go get some diamonds because I knew I would kind of need them if I was not going to be getting those materials that Laguno wanted. So if I could bribe him with some extra diamonds, you know, maybe that's not a bad thing. So I turned into a bat and started flying around these caves trying to find any diamonds that I had missed in the past. And I actually found a few. Um, not sure I missed them the first go around, but you know, we'll take what we can get. After some time down in the mines, I decided that I had, you know, gotten down two more times and you know, I, I had plenty of diamonds. I didn't need more. So I was gonna drop off what I did find in the nether and some diamonds by Laguno's house. So I quickly shot him a message and um, he said that he didn't live where he used to live. So. I uh, started trying to find out where he did live. Lagundo eventually gave me the coordinates, um, but didn't really want me to get followed because Sean and Robert and Shadow were online. And so, yeah, that was mildly concerning, especially when uh, Shadow sent me a message saying that Sean wants to talk at the inn. And uh, that's never good, because every time Sean specifically requests me to talk, in past videos, that's resulted in uh, being death, kidnapped, thrown into basement, uh, thrown inside of a obsidian tomb like it never goes well so um so i uh you know decided to take the risk and go and actually see him so that's uh that's exactly what i did so i met up with sean and uh then we started talking and uh here's some of what he had to say i have a single vampire <laughs> fang in my house and i was debating on using it and becoming a vampire yeah because i don't want to lose my skill points is that how you become a vampire uh, or I could just, you know, nibble on you real quick. Yeah, nibble on Robert. No, no, I, I'm, I'm second guessing myself. What? So as you just heard, um, Sean and Robert apparently wanted to become vampires, but then, you know, kind of backed out of it. And then we decided that one of them would become a vampire when night rolled around. And it just kind of miraculously happened. But then while we were discussing it, Shadow Mech placed something down on the ground, which uh, appeared oh to be God. TNT of some sorts, and uh, there was a little explosion, followed by a really, really, really big explosion. And I mean, like, big. It killed, it killed everyone. It killed Sean, it killed me, it killed Robert. However, because it was a death to a player, I had to take the death, meaning all of my stuff would be on the ground, and I wouldn't be able to use most of my weapons. And this was really, really bad, especially considering that now all of my skill levels were reset and I had no shot in killing any of them. So I had to take the death and then immediately got back there as soon as I could. The second I did, I started picking up my stuff, as much of it as I humanly could. However, because some of it was modded, I was able to use some of it still. Now I had the opportunity to kill the other two players I needed to fulfill my contract and not have to throw all of my stuff in lava. So that's what I did. 
And with three swift blows, I took down Sean. Sean was now dead. And now Shadow was saying that it was a contract. Was there multiple contracts out? Was there multiple that had to kill multiple people? I had no clue. But I immediately ran towards Shadow and killed him too. But then Robert, seeing that I had killed both of his friends, ran towards me and killed me. Now, I had killed the three players that I needed to, but was also reset back to zero skill levels in every single department. Meaning I would have to get new iron tools. I would have to level up to use any iron tools. And I would have to get all of my gear back. All of the netherite mining. All of everything that I had done to this point was now gone. All of those skill levels gone for good. Meaning I had to get that stuff back as soon as possible. Especially considering now was day four. And we only had three more days until the final battle. Which we, did, we didn't have any clue what that would consist of. Although I had heard some rumors that it might be 1v1 fights. And I am not that good at PvP. I thought I made that straight up clear when I, uh, you know, started doing all this stuff. But I am, I'm bad. I'm like really bad at PvP. I needed the best gear possible so I could survive as long as humanly possible. And so, uh, after talking with Sean and Robert and explaining that, uh, that I actually had the contract that required me to kill three players... I was given some of the best armor in the game. There was this like scale chest plate and then there's this, you know, dragon steel helmet. And oh my gosh, they were pretty darn good. Uh, well, except, you know, the chest plate wasn't as good as the obsidian version of um, the, the chest plate. So I would just have to get that back, but it would be good in place for now. However, the dragon steel helmet, that was way better than the obsidian helmet. Meaning I had to get less netherite now, which would put me on a pretty good trajectory to get my gear back. So I logged off for a little while, and once I knew that everyone was gone, I realized that there was that massive crater now, which had a bunch of mine shafts leading into it. And I had no clue if I had explored them before or not, but that would be where I would start to get as many levels as possible. So when I logged back in, I went through that crater, mining every piece of copper, every piece of iron that I could possibly find, and starting back from scratch, like I had on day one, by smelting all of this stuff down to get as many quick levels as humanly possible. Before I knew it, I had nearly a full inventory, just full of materials. So then I made myself some furnaces so I could start smelting all that stuff down and leveling up my skills once again. And uh, I had to repeat this process a lot of times. Mine, smelt, get the levels, upgrade my skills over and over again until eventually I was able to use iron tools and then diamond tools because I would need diamond tools to get netherite again and to also get obsidian. But uh, I would need levels first and it takes a lot. So that's what I did. I mined and mined and mined and mined and mined. And then I uh, got into some fights where I uh, ended up getting downed and had no blood. However, because of it being a you know, massive cave that was now open to the air, I had to wait until it got dark for me to escape. But there was just one problem with that, and that problem was Robert. Once again, he did not want it to be dark outside. He slept at every possibility, and because there was only two of us on the server, he was the only one that needed to sleep to make that happen. And so every single time it almost got dark, while I was on half of a heart with no blood, waiting to go out and fly up to the mustard inn so that I could get back home, so I could get some blood, so that I could survive, without stop, he would sleep. So I had to sit there and wait. And I kept on waiting. And I kept on chat messaging him too. He knew what he was doing. I, I told him straight up that he was just being very, very annoying at this point. After some time, I realized that he was just, he was just trolling me pretty much. He, uh, he was kind of, kind of salty that I had killed his friends. And I, I don't know what his reasoning was, but I had, I had two things working for me. I was in a cave where there was mobs and where there's mobs, there's spiders. And if there's spiders, there's string. And the only things I need to make an umbrella is two wool blocks, which requires eight string, and some iron, which I had in abundance of. So I quickly made myself a, uh, a nice umbrella. And um, I'm kind of kind of annoyed that I didn't realize that I could do that earlier. But uh, I threw on my umbrella and then just walked right out of the crater, went to the teleporter, and uh, teleported right back home. So that was, uh, 
pretty anticlimactic end to, to all that I had done. But then after, you know, getting getting some more blood in my system, I uh, quickly looked into what I would need to get my armor back before getting myself some diamond tools that I couldn't even really use, but you know, they'd be useful later once I do get leveled up to that level. And then logged off for, I don't, I don't know how long, but I, I logged off for a little while. And then when I logged back on, Kipley was online. So I decided to meet up with Kipley. And uh, where else would I meet up but the massive crater at the inn. So we uh, met up, chatted a little bit. I let her know exactly what happened with this massive crater. And um, then we expressed some interest in working together if uh, to go on some quests or I, I don't know exactly what our terminology was, but you know, we would mutually help each other. And especially considering that she was now the only player on the server who hadn't had all of their levels reset. And so with that being the case, I, f I had a feeling that Sean, who apparently, I, I learned this later, was cooked up in a cave with explosives, um, was planning on killing everyone at least once to reset their levels. So I warned Kipley about that, and um, then we went on our ways. Part of what I did was I went off to, you know, the, the, the nether portal. There was a waypoint to a nether portal that I had found. And um, I went to that waypoint, which was in a mine, and then started exploring this mine. Didn't really find much in that mine, but then I, I found another mine, and this other mine was massive. There was tons of iron, there was tons of, tons of resources. And I found some emeralds too, which I thought would be pretty useful if I were to, you know, trade with any villagers. Kind of like Sneeves villagers that he had in his house. So, uh... I decided to mine some emeralds, and I was expecting like a vein of five maximum, because I saw there, there was like three together. But typically veins of emeralds are very small, and they're pretty rare to come by. And uh, I found I found a lot of them. Like I started mining, and I, I realized, oh wow, I have like 20 vein, and it just kind of keeps going. And then I, I kept mining, and then it, there was more. And then I kept mining, and then there was even more. and I, I just kept mining and then there's some corpse stalkers came out to try and get me away from these emeralds and I was like Nah, man, these are my emeralds. Then I you know got rid of the corpse stalker then started mining again found more emeralds and more emeralds and more emeralds and uh, So many emeralds in fact that I spent probably a half hour just mining emeralds and It was some it came out to like some crazy number. It was like 300 400 some like it, it was insane, the number of emeralds that I got. And that just like really stuck out in my mind as something that just normally does not happen in the slightest. But after that, I proceeded to mine some more, <laughs> realized I was low on blood, and then uh, was now stuck in the predicament again where I had to wait out the sun so then I could get back home because this cave was just a random cave in the middle of nowhere. It wasn't really that close to my house. Thankfully, Robert was not online, so he couldn't just sleep the night away and ruin my life. But uh, this cave actually was pretty decently close to where I lived, so I quickly flew over, noticed the, the goblin castle thingamabobber that was next to my village, and then uh, swung down and landed in my village at my house uh, before getting some blood. And uh, once I was full on blood again, I started smelting down some materials, made myself another umbrella so I wouldn't be stuck underground again and then proceeded to fly around and look for materials. And uh, I found this, this berry looking thing that uh, had to be planted in amorite blocks. Now I had no clue what this flower was, but um, I decided to plant it and just kind of see what would happen. And then I planted it in my base and then I uh, continued to pretty much just record it. Well, then I left the server, I should say. And then I just kind of recorded myself on the play multiplayer screen for like 30 minutes before I uh, realized that I had left my recording on, turned it off, and uh, that was the end of day four. Some crazy stuff was gonna happen on day five. And I mean, that's saying something considering day four was, you know, explosive, but day five got pretty interesting. Okay, I uh, may have lied on day four about day five being an interesting day. Um, it wasn't really, but um, here's kind of what happened. So at the start of day five, um, I got on twice during day five, but the first time I got on, 
I uh, didn't have too much time to be on, so I decided to do the most rational thing with my time, which was taking out another Goblin King and getting all of his goodies. So, that's what I did. So, I uh, immediately found, well, not really immediately, after, you know, looking around a little bit, I found myself a Goblin King castle. And so I went inside, I knocked very politely before storming in and killing everyone in there. And, uh, you know, it took a little bit of time. There was some intense moments where I was getting shot and had to like run away and revive my health a little bit. But y you know how it is. So after taking out a bunch of the goblins, I eventually got to the Goblin King, where I took him out and got a nice little crown for myself. I don't think I ever wore it, but at least I had, well, I guess I had two now. And then uh, when I logged on later in the day, I had a different goal. Instead of just not doing anything, I decided that today would be the day that I move out of my little cave and build myself a house. However, because I was a vampire, it wasn't just as easy as go outside, build a house. It also had to be dark so then I could get the roof done. Unless I, you know, just quickly exposed my pale gamer skin to the sun for just a few seconds at a time to quickly build a roof over my head so that I wouldn't burn. So, um, yeah, with a mix of doing that and, uh, you know, gathering a ton of wood because I was kind of building this thing out of the wood, the spider cave thing that I had found earlier, I think day two or something like that, um, along with just pretty much any materials I could find, I, uh, Dug out the ground right in front of the cave, built myself a nice checkerboard pattern for my floor, and then started building up the walls and building up a structure that I could use for this massive mansion. Then eventually I got to the roof. I made a very, very nice design in my opinion. Don't criticize me, please. Actually, I, I don't think it looks super good, but it was, it was good enough. It was good enough for the scenario. So, you know, it was good enough to keep me out of the sun. So that's all that matters. Yeah, then I then I kept building. Then I ran upon these like these grubby little things. They they were like throwing slime on the floor and like they didn't look too friendly. And um, I learned later that some someone on this server had beaten a boss that like released these these crazy things into the world. And I was I was having to bear the consequence of their their actions because every single time I tried to build a wall, they were just like and trying to kill me. I'm like, no, please uh, don't do that. I'm trying to live my life. But after some time, I got up the walls and then decided to work on a second floor as well, which um, took a little bit of time, but I eventually got a second floor and a roof and all that knocked out. And then started turning the cave that I had initially lived in into a chest, furnace, crafting, extravaganza room, uh, some people would call it. N nobody's gonna call it that. Either way, uh, it was it was starting to come together. It was looking good. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's day five in a nutshell. Was basically building a house and um, and killing a king. So uh, yeah, get ready for day six now. <laughs> okay, I got my uh, days mixed up a little bit. Uh, it was actually day six that the the slimy things started, you know, coming up from everywhere. And I also may have lied about the second floor. I, I apparently did start that at the start of, uh, of day six. So, um, now you get to see me build the, the rest of the house. You get to see the, the second floor, the, the lovely, uh, aftermath, I, I should say. Um, so I'm sorry about misleading you a little bit there, and especially to the editors. I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry for that. Yeah, I kind of feel bad because you were probably scrambling around looking for so much footage and just not finding it on day five. Day six was a little bit more interesting. Um, besides, you know, building the second floor, which, which I did do on day six, not day five. I also decided to go uh, netherite mining again, cause uh, you know, I wanted my strong armor back and I was starting to feel like a, a weak scrawny man without my, my big strong armor. Yeah, I went to the nether, that didn't go particularly well. I like uh, almost died uh, a little bit mostly my fault you know that, that's generally how it is uh but i did end up getting some ancient debris which i could turn into some netherite um not a lot but it was it was good enough for the first trip down then after that i flew around looking for a new cave to mine in because for one i needed more diamonds a bunch more iron because that armor is expensive and uh of course some obsidian for that armor 
and so then maybe I could have a portal in my own house to be able to get to the nether a little bit easier. Well, in that cave, I was uh, damaged quite a bit and brought down to like three and a half hearts or something like that. And so, of course, I needed blood, and uh, blood is very important for a man like me to survive. So uh, I flew my way out of that cave, uh, turned myself into a bat, and uh, was lucky to find a village right next to the entrance to that cave. So I quickly went over to a bunch of those villagers and started another mandatory blood drive just at this village and not my own. After refilling my health, I was able to find a waystone at that village too, and because there was a lot of villagers there, I might have to return here in case I needed extra blood. So I set my waypoint there, so then I would be able to come back at any time. I then headed back down into the cave and uh, mined a bit more, got some more obsidian, some more random stuff, and then of course got more injured as well, because that seems to be a recurring theme. Whenever I go down into these caves, I seem to uh, get injured to the point of almost dying. Yeah, yeah, caves are not, not a fun place. Lucky for me though, I had some villagers right nearby, you know, was able to refill my health a little bit. As I went back down into the mine, I noticed that Sneeve and Kipley got an achievement that said clear skies together at the same time, meaning that they're they're obviously working together for some reason for, you know, some project. You know, they seemed pretty happy about their their little achievement that they had gotten. And so I uh, I told them I'm just a, a normal vampire trying to provide enough blood for my family. Uh, and then Lagundo decided to join in on this little bit and said for for just gold, uh, for just five gold, you can support a struggling Batman. And then I said, for just one subscribe, you can support a struggling content creator. Speaking of, um, if you want to subscribe, that would help me out a ton, for one. And then for two, you know, it, it just makes me feel really good about, you know, these internet numbers that bring me self-gratification. That's, that's very important to me. But yeah, look at this hungry YouTuber. For just one like, you can feed this man. Uh, yes, likes do actually feed my family. After those shenanigans, I then went back to my house with, uh, with all the stuff that I had gotten and uh, was able to make myself a netherite ingot. I got a bunch of iron blocks and iron and diamonds and whatnot ready so that I could uh, craft up my uh, my armor. After that, I decided because uh, Kipley and Sneeve were obviously together off doing their own adventures, uh, me and Lagundo discussed doing our own little, um, well, I wouldn't really call it an adventure, it'd be more like a test. So because of the mods that we had, there was a lot of different types of arrows. And uh, none of us knew exactly what any of them did. So Lagundo made it his mission to make, you know, at least a little bit of every single type of arrow and wanted to, um, well, test it on another player. And, um, well, that ended up being me. So, um, yeah, he, uh, he multiple times shot me with an arrow, and then it was like, oh, well, that, that does that. Oh, wow, that one spawned a, a slime on me. Uh, or, you know, just random stuff like that. It wasn't, wasn't anything too crazy until he started talking about this, um, this obsidian arrow, I think is what it was called. It was, it was something just a little, a little kind of worrying, because... I already knew, like, the obsidian armor was really good, but an obsidian arrow, that's... That could, uh, that could be dangerous. So then he just, you know, cocked back this bow, pointed it at me, and then I was like, yep, I'm ready to go. Let's, let's do this, Lagundo. And, uh, then he shot me. And then it instant killed me. There was, like, not a chance for him to revive me. It just, like, straight up killed me. Like, I would have to resurrect myself. That, that arrow was crazy. Far too powerful. Especially considering I was at full health, which was 14 hearts, for one. And then for two, I was wearing the strongest helmet in the game. The, like, third strongest, or fourth strongest chest plate. The third strongest leggings, and some iron boots, which brought me well over full armor. It's just insane. And, uh, this was a little bit of Lagundo's reaction. <laughs> How much damage does that do? I was at full, so I had 14 hearts and then Ooh. plus my armor. So with that being said, that brought down my blood a bunch. So I went and grabbed some more blood and then came back for, for some more testing. Lagundo felt pretty bad about killing me, actually. Um, so he decided to bring me by his house as well. So I got to uh, get the grand tour of his house, which was actually a Goblin King castle that he had taken over and converted into being his house. 
it was pretty cool looking, especially with all these armor sets that he was making. He was just making random armor sets, um, and he said his goal was to make all of them, and then just putting them up around his house. And it was, I'm not going to lie, very cool looking. And uh, so I might have to steal that for my own house. But then, while we were standing around, we decided to invite the uh, salty man Sneeve himself to our house. I'm sure he said something stupid, so if you, you know, the editors, if you want to throw something funny that he said in right here, that'd be a, a great place for it. Why are you two fighting? Uh, yeah, because he's I don't short. Because he's red. <laughs> And then, uh, of course, Kipley decided to show up as well, and uh, they, they wanted some sort of quest. I'm not gonna lie, this was like already midnight at this point. I, uh, I started recording very late in the day, but this was midnight, a and uh, I just decided to go along with it, you know, see, see what shenanigans we would get up to, uh, mostly because I wanted more content. For you guys but they had uh, some sort of mission about killing a dragon well that sounded vaguely terrifying so uh i decided to join them of course so they had this uh this waypoint thing and i was like wow that's great let's go let's do it yeah we took a waypoint to this uh random place in the middle of nowhere where apparently there was a dragon that everyone had found that i had no clue about i guess we were gonna kill a dragon today so um we showed up and uh and then we went to go slay a dragon oh boy um yeah we got there we started looking around uh kipley was just kind of jumping on top of where the dragon should be which uh, apparently meant no dragon we looked around seeing if we could find a dragon and uh there was no dragons in sight which was very unfortunate so then instead we decided to go to a tower one of those big towers that i had you know cleared out the bottom levels of multiple times but never Never realized how to summon the boss for one of those. So uh, we decided that we were going to take out this boss and I was going to be the bait. That thing was gonna chase me and they were gonna shoot the thing that was chasing me, which sounded like a good plan as long as that thing didn't get its hands on me. That, that was, you know, that was wonderful, running around trying not to die. And so that's what I did. Um, and then eventually we were able to kill this boss and the tower kind of collapsed, which was really interesting. And then, you know, the adventure I thought was going to end there, but no. No, these guys, they wanted to stay up till like 3 a.m. doing goofy stuff. And because I'm a goofy guy, I decided to go along with it. <laughs> um, and part of that ended up going into the Twilight Forest, which, if you guys don't know, is a mod that's been around for like 12 years, but it's like, it's crazy. It's this other dimension that has like a ton of crazy mobs, and it was just crazy crazy thing. And so we were going to kill a Hydra, which if you don't know what a Hydra is, it has it's like from Greek mythology, it has like three heads and every time you chop off a head, two grow back. And it oh my gosh. Like those things are not fun. They shoot fire and like, you know, can kill you pretty pretty darn easily. And so we uh we arrived at the Twilight Forest and um then we got in our their, our air vehicles, uh, so Kipley and Sneev got in this, like, fast, like, helicopter-looking thing, and then me and Lagundo hopped in a blimp, and, uh, we started flying around trying to look for one of these things. Instead of finding a Hydra, we found what was called, like, a, a Minishroom. It was, like, a, a Minosaur from also Greek mythology, but just, like, a sh mushroom, like a, a mushroom, I should say something like that and uh so we found this like maze thing and uh trust me it was amazing i need to stop with these jokes they're not funny but but we uh we found this uh this castle i guess not really a castle more like an underground maze kind of thing i should say we found it and uh started exploring around trying to find our way through a maze and um you know this group of four with you know kipley sneeve lagundo and ryan together i mean I'm not gonna lie, between the four of us, there was maybe two brains, and considering that Lagundo and Kipley have one brain each, I'm not sure how the distribution between me and Sneeve goes. But we started searching around this maze and got lost a lot, and apparently this thing had three floors. So we started off at the top floor, uh, eventually found ourselves to the middle, and then hopped down into the second floor. And then, once again, started looking around the second floor, trying to find a way down to the, to the third floor, and um, that took a, a long long time but eventually we were able to find our way down now we just had to find the boss and then of course find our way back up which 
you know, it sounds easier than it actually was. But we started taking out this boss, or, well, I, not really, we, you know, had to find it first. So we looked around corners, we blew open walls with creepers, not really on purpose. And we just pretty much did anything humanly possible to find this mina shroom thing. Eventually we did find it, or I found it, and then screamed like a little girl and then told everyone else where it was so that we could tag team it because I had no clue how dangerous this thing would be. So what we did, we tag teamed it, we uh, attacked it, we uh, killed it, which was, you know, pretty epic. After killing it, we got the goods and had to leave. Sneev and Kipley had this like waypoint like thing in their back pocket where they could use it every I think 300 seconds was the amount of time and then they could just teleport to any waypoint from wherever they are and it was a warp stone uh eventually they got me one but we wanted to uh make our way out of this thing and Sneeve needed some more blood and he was going to get me some as well they left and just kind of left me and Lagundo to our own devices trying to find our way out of this uh, out of this maze. That was not amazing. It was rather unamazing, but it was uh, pretty difficult uh, considering that we had already found our way down. Now we had to find our way up and we just kept walking in circles and circles and, and like we would see something and be like, oh, is that something new? No, no, it's the same thing that we saw earlier and just kept on going in circles and like it took us maybe 20 minutes to find our way up to the second floor where we had to do it again. By that time, we just decided, yeah, we can't find the way up. We're going to get our way out. We're gonna mine our way uh, through some dirt that we found up and out. By the time we mined our way up, Kipley and Sneeve were already up there waiting for us. Felt kind of bad because that took us way too long. But eventually, after uh, getting up and out, we had to uh, look for a Hydra, which was our initial goal in coming here. You know, Sneeve and Kipley's uh, flying boat, it kind of looked like a flying boat, I'm not gonna lie, but just with like a helicopter thing, and then also like a, I don't know, I don't know how to describe what they were flying, but regardless, they, um, they were way faster than us. So, they scouted ahead trying to find the Hydra before uh, me and Lagundo and we kind of split directions, but kind of still headed in the same general direction so that we wouldn't be too far apart. Stephen Kipley found it, and then me and Lagundo slowly meandered our way over there, eventually making it. Once we did make it, we all got our gear together, made sure we were ready to go. I was given some healing spells, which uh, seemed pretty, pretty lit, pretty epic to have. And then we decided to, to go and uh, kill the Hydra. So we uh, jumped down into this arena well i mean we started with arrows of course and then we uh, eventually jumped down into this arena to to kill the hydra and so that's what we did a lot of the time it was focused on me so the other people were able to get some hits in and eventually we were able to take down the hydra it wasn't a super climactic fight i mean if you want an epic fight scene here here at the black bars and just like epic war music and then just me me attacking the the hydra or you know everyone attacking the hydra with like you know maybe soldiers yelling in the background like a hua so that's what happened in in the epic sense in a more practical sense it wasn't too crazy then after that i found some diamonds that were up in the ceiling so i went up and got those diamonds real quick you know a starving youtuber like me needs needs diamonds to survive and so i uh, got them and then came back down used my warp stone that i had newly acquired to get back to uh the initial waypoint at the spawn of the twilight forest and then went back to lagundo's house after uh, getting back to lagundo's house we discussed a little bit talked about our our wonderful journey that we had and then we uh went our on our own ways which uh for me meant getting offline because it was 3 a.m and i needed some sleep now it was day seven the final day of this scenario before we would have our massive final fight which we found out would be a 1v1 between each of us in a bracket style winner takes all. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah, I need good gear for that. Uh, because I'm bad at the game. So, um, I started off day, uh, day seven here by going to the Twilight Forest where I found out that diamonds were incredibly abundant. 
So I kind of went in a bunch of mines, got a bunch of diamonds, uh, did all that sh shortish stuff. I flew around a lot. I uh, found a lot of mobs and uh, it, it kind of took a little while before I found a, a good source of diamonds, but eventually I was able to find a good source of diamonds. Eventually, after some time, I was able to find like 32 diamonds. It was pretty insane, but you know, we'll take what we can get and uh, especially considering the more diamonds, the better. I then proceeded to go back to my house, getting more blood, you know, you know, the whole nine yards. I've been doing it this entire time, pretty much, because I've been a vampire. But with all the diamonds that I had gathered while I was in the Twilight Forest, I had one goal for them. To turn them into blocks so I could finish my obsidian set of armor. And I only had the boots left, so that's what I next crafted. But then I uh, started looking at spells, which, um, you know, last night Lagundo had tossed me three healing spells, which... Uh, you know, were pretty interesting. I could just use them and heal up, and it would just not really take anything to do that. So I started looking into the other spells, the, specifically the damage ones, because if we were going to be fighting, the more spells, the better. If I could, you, if I could have any sort of advantage at all, I was going to take it. So I started looking into spells, but most of them were pretty expensive, except for like a rock throwing one and some other stuff. So I uh, quickly made as many of those as I humanly could. So yeah, after uh, after doing some spell stuff, I felt way more confident in going back to the uh, to the Twilight Forest. So I uh, went in and uh, was gonna get some more diamonds, just just anything I could find. So I went back into a mine, and then there was some mobs down there, and these mobs were not so friendly. And so these mobs started trying to attack me. Some of them did attack me. And eventually I was downed by the rat man, but was able to resurrect myself. And uh, then, you know, I decided to go back home to get more blood because I was running low. When I realized that the rat man had taken all of my armor. And that's not good considering I had the strongest helmet in the game. I had pretty much full of the obsidian, like really, really good armor. And it, it's day seven, like tomorrow I've got to fight. And so if I don't have strong armor, I'm screwed. Like, I, I couldn't, I can't win. Uh, so I had, to go, I had to go back and find the rat man and kill him. So uh, that's what I did. I went right back to the Twilight Forest. I put on some other armor. And I met up with Kim so that I could have a second pair of hands helping me with that. And uh, went to, to the same cave. Eventually found a rat man, killed the rat man, and got my armor and stuff back. So, uh, after getting all of that back, um, I was able to, to go about my way. And so, I'm not gonna lie, actually, on day seven, I thought that it was supposed to be, like, the, the final fight day. So, I, uh, th there was something complicated. I had a second video that I was recording at the time, and I thought that the times intersected so I wouldn't be able to do the other video if I was doing this one. And so I, I thought that this was going to be the final fight. And then Kim told me that today was not the final fight, that there was tomorrow we were going to hop on and do the tournament style bracket thing. And I was so relieved. And, um, you know, especially after getting all of my stuff back, um, I, I filled up my blood bottles and then realized that there wasn't a fight today. And after having like 14 blood bottles filled going to every village that I knew, I, while I logged off for the night, it wasn't the end of day 7. Whereas usually I would log in after 3 p.m. and it would be a new day. And so when I logged back in on, I guess, the ending of day 7, before the, the massive fights happened, I uh, made sure that I had everything I needed. So I had two crossbows, a bow and arrow, a bunch of arrows, tons of blood. Um, I had slime arrows, which apparently slowed people down. Uh, which I thought could be useful if they got close. I could just shoot them with that and then um, have some sort of advantage in hitting them and uh, getting away from them if need be. I also had a bucket of milk just in case they had some potion effect that that could like totally cripple me. And then also like some crystal grenades kind of thing. Like I throw those and then it makes a big crystal out of the ground. It's really cool. But uh, I got all that stuff together, um, got into my hot bar, got everything lined up. I put some basic enchantments, so it was like protection one um, on my chest plate and on my pants. And then I went to meet up with Sean, Shadow, 
Pretty much everyone except Kim uh, was there. Well, Kim and Laguna were, were there. So we sat around talking, um, talking about our armor, our, our stuff. Um, apparently Robert, or I think it was Robert, Robert or Shadow, one of those two, was going to do a gentleman's duel. So they were going to um, both be wearing iron armor, iron sword, that kind of thing. I thought it was pretty interesting, but with all of the work that I had put into my armor and whatnot, I was pretty confident that I would have the fight. So here's some stuff that we talked about. You can just kind of throw in footage of um, of the shenanigans that we uh, got into, and uh, and yeah. Uh, delicious nighttime. I was so confused. Uh, you're right, sure. <laughs> Steve, what are you talking about runic tablets? Uh, Sean's got a weapon, a runic sword. Oh. Oh, no, no, it's a dragon sword. That's not. It's a runic yes, it sword. No. Nope. No, it's a dragon sword. Oh my god! He shoot through walls! Oh ah! no! Zero hearts and of damage. And see through walls as well. Oh no! <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't tell me that, Ryan. Don't tell me that. Ah, I'm so worried. I hope. Oh! Ah! No! Ah! Oh no! Oh, oh, oh sorry, sorry. Ah! That was a lantern. I was, I was shooting the guys in the sky. Crit, crit, woman. Crit! You... I don't know how to crit! <laughs> you, you have to hit as you're falling down. There you go. Oh my okay, god. So that tells you about how well I'm going to be doing in this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Last night I hit Lagunda with... Uh, oh! It's a little doggy. Woof. Yeah. That's not a dog. <laughs> oh. yeah. I didn't get oh, yeah. to tell you, Ryan, or you, Sneeve, but... Did they tell you what my plan is? Uh, no. Please enlighten us. I'm fighting an honorable duel. Oh, that, yes. Okay. Iron only. I have, I have two sets of iron armor, one for me and the, and the person I'm going against. I see. Wow. They Are they both exactly the same? Up, up to them. Yeah, it's the, it's the exact same. We're down to the wire. It's it's bare bones, raw combat. Oh. Cool. So here's what we'll do. Whoever, whoever, oh, whoever, win, whoever wins in our... Oh! oh. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, what, you! What was that? <laughs> oh no! What's help me up! Help me up! Help me up! Help me up! Oh, you help goobers! Hey, there's no, uh, no house any. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. Uh. Uh. No, it didn't activate. Until I picked it up and set it. <laughs> You were behind us! Yeah, of course he was! I told you you didn't trust me, your house would be annihilated. <laughs> Are you joking me right now? I was so pissed! You should have died! I can't believe this! Wait, what who, happened? who has... Wait, Kim, I tried to set, Kim set up a hydrogen bomb trap this morning and it didn't work. And I walked into it and the hydrogen bomb didn't explode. I have it on, I have it on video if you don't believe me. The hydrogen bomb, like was floating on the ground in front of the giant crater. Not the giant crater, the little crater. So I picked it up and then I set this trap really early this morning. And Robert, you were about, I would say, three seconds away from seeing me. You come through the portal as I'm putting the last grass piece down. Oh my God. And the whole day today, I've been sitting with that detonator in my pocket. <laughs> oh my God. Just wanna bring him up. Oh, he did. Are you pl actually playing that scene? Yes, yeah. he is. That's so cool. That's awesome. I can't fly! <laughs> I can just say <laughs> I had to know I'm glad to be back and I'm set loose! On the loose! Dance, dance, oh, this is a cool one. I'm glad you didn't oh. do oh. every fantasy this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lessons learned. I was about to do, I was about to Forget say. Forget the hearse because I'll never die. Yeah, yeah. Now that we were in the arena, the fights were about to begin. However, I wasn't first. And if you really want to see the other fights, I recommend you go and see everyone else's videos to see how those went. But finally, it came around time for it to be my fight. And so I, uh. I got ready, went down into the arena, and got ready for it to get started. Steve, I'm gonna put you in the ground! I immediately started running up on him, shooting him with some Come arrows. Come here, Steve! Oh. Nope. Nope. Uh. Ah. <laughs> that what? Oh. Nope. 
What? No! Hold up! <laughs> Not again! <laughs> oh. <laughs> and so I had died, I had perished to Sneeve, and Sneeve moved on to the next fight in the next arena. And if you want to see how well he does, if he makes it to the finals, all that kind of stuff, definitely go check out his video, especially if you like the vampire stuff. Definitely go check out his video, because he was the only other vampire on the server. Ow, ow, my hands are literally shaking, Jesus. <laughs> Ryan. Oh, the chains. Welcome, welcome to the losers with me and Kim. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Now we have to find someone better. This is not, this is not better than losing. <laughs> now, uh, for the rest of you guys, uh, I wish you a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.